Hello, this is Yvonne Menier, and this is video number seven in the EQ Stitch series of lessons. And this one is just going to be simply having fun and playing around with the program. We're going to start by launching our EQ Stitch program by double clicking on the icon on the desktop. When it opens up, we're just going to close the tip of the day. I'm going to open a new project. I've already named this project. This one's video seven, playing around with EQ Stitch. And I'm just going to open that. I haven't done anything yet in my uh, project book, so I'm just going to close it. I want to work with the applique uh, tab for machine embroidery. So I'm going to click on the work on stitching icon to start with. And then I'm going to go to stitching, new design, machine applique. Now I like to see my little dots on my screen so I am going to my drawing board and I am going to say snap grid and I'm going to click on display large grid dots and say OK. Now I have a little bit better visual. Now in this uh, video today we're just going to play around a little bit and see how many different ways we can change the applique functions of our program. So we're going to start with the oval tool, looks like a heart. We're going to click on that, have the heart selected, move our cursor over onto our drawing board and just click and drag a heart onto the screen. And I'm going to center it. Now you can see mine shows as a patch that is a default for the program. I don't actually want to see a patch at this time. I want to see my lines. So I'm going up here and I'm just turning off the patch so I have just the lines that are visible. Now I'm going to go to my fabric tab and I'm going to select a fabric for my heart and let's make a blue heart. And we're going to click and apply the fabric. Then we're going to the stitch tab. The default for the program is to apply a zigzag stitch to the edge. Now uh, we have our applique uh, edge tool over here on the right hand side. If I click on that, I can see the properties that I can apply to an applique uh, patch. Now the program shows we can either do a zigzag stitch or an e-stitch. Those are the only two decisions the program allows us to make when it's auto-digitizing. But I want to play with this a little bit and see what else I can make it do in the applique setting, still having the auto-digitize turned on, without creating my own applique. So let's take a look at this zigzag stitch. First thing I'm going to do is color it. So I'm going to click on the set thread tool and I'm going to pick a high contrast color just so I can see my stitches better and click on the heart to apply them. When we go to the sew simulator, the little uh, sewing machine in the upper right hand corner, we can watch how this stitches and I'm going to slow it down just a bit and I'm going to click on play sewing forward. It does a tack down or a placement stitch, a tack down stitch, and then a zigzag stitch, which is a very dense zigzag stitch. Some of you may call this a satin stitch. Some of you may refer to this as a steel stitch. It is basically a zigzag stitch with a very uh, strong density to it so that it has very solid fill. And we're just going to refresh the screen so we can see that back. So that is the default setting for the applique edge stitch. So I'm just going to save that into my sketchbook. And now I want to take a look at the other uh, default settings. So I'm going back to the set applique edge. And the other default setting is an e-stitch. So I'm going to click on the e-stitch icon. And I'm going to move my cursor over and I'm going to click on it. And now this is an e-stitch. I'm going to zoom in so you understand what an e-stitch e is. So I'm going to click on my zoom tool. I'm going to click and drag an area just on the edge of the heart. It's difficult to see because of the density here. But what an e-stitch is, it's uh, the capital letter E that has a backbone and three lines off to the side, usually with the center one a shorter distance than the two outer edges of the E. And that's the normal E stitch. So let's go back and take a look at that again. So again, when we're on the sew simulator, we can see it will sew a placement line, a tack down line, 
and then it will do the E stitch which has two longer legs and a shorter leg in between. Now we can change the density of this to make it look a little bit different. We can also change the density for our, uh, our zigzag stitch too. So let's take a look at this one while we're here. What this is, this is our property settings up here. Adjust percent 75 percent. What that means is that the middle leg of the E is 75 percent of the length of the rest of the E. So let's just, uh, I'm going to increase the, uh, or decrease the density a bit. I'm going to go up here, it says adjust density, and I'm going to type in the number 10. Now the higher the number, the less dense it is. So now that I've typed in a 10, I'm going to click on this to set it. And you can see it's a lot less dense. Now I'm going to be able to zoom in for a minute. And we can see that E. So there's the capital letter E with a spine to the backbone, a longer stitch, a shorter stitch, and a longer stitch. This 75% is, this is 75% of this. So I can make it 100% and click on it, and now they're all the same length. I can make it a lower percent, click to apply it, and it's even shorter yet. What I can also do is I can change this E stitch into a blanket stitch. And I do that by completely removing the center leg of the E by typing in zero. And now we have a blanket stitch. Now what you can see, this is your placement line, this is your tack down line, and here is your E. This is actually the cut edge of your fabric. Once you have your tack down line, you trim your fabric to this line. And that's about as close as you can get to it because of the thickness of the blade of the scissors. So you may not want this out here. So what this is telling us is that 75% of our stitch is inside of the fabric edge and 25% is outside. But let's put the whole thing inside so that this edge falls right in line with the cut edge of our fabric. So I'm going to adjust my percent and I'm going to say 99% and click on it. And now you can see it's moved over so it's right on the edge of the fabric. And this is what you would do when you're doing an E-stitch or especially a blanket stitch. Now you have the option at this point as to how you're going to uh, deal with this stitch here that you'll see. Again, this is your placement line here. And the placement line is underneath your fabric, so you won't see it. This tack down line you will see, especially when it's this open. So what you can do is you can match this tack down thread to the same color as your fabric so you don't see it as much. Or you can have your tack down thread be a wash away thread. So you tack down in, on this line with a wash away thread and then once you do your third step of your finishing your edge stitch you can then remove this stitch in here and you will only see the true blanket stitch without seeing that tack down line in there. So that's another way to use that. So let's zoom back out again. So again, this is an E stitch according to the program, but we've made it into a blanket stitch because we have removed the center leg of the E by adjusting the percent to zero. Let's go back now to that satin stitch again, or the zigzag stitch. So we're going to click on the zigzag stitch, and we're just going to click back on. And you see how it's held the, uh, the properties that I had when I was on my E-stitch. I want to go back to the traditional zigzag stitch, which looks like a fill stitch. I don't have to type in the numbers or try to remember what they were. I can just click on this blue arrow and that will restore my settings back to what they are for a zigzag stitch and click back on and there I have it back again. So this blue arrow is to restore the settings. 
Now, what if I don't want an e-stitch, a blanket stitch, or a satin stitch, but I want the program to automatically lay those three lines of stitches that I require for creating an applique without drawing my own three lines? We can still do this. We can make another adjustment. Again, we're in the zigzag stitch. We can adjust the width to zero. Now zero, a zero width would mean it's a straight line. So let's just apply that. And you can see there's our placement line, our tack down line, and what appears to be a straight line now around the outside. But let's zoom in and look at that closely. And what you can see is actually a zigzag stitch going back and forth that's very, very narrow width. This zigzagging back and forth, this dense, can cause some problems when stitching at the machine. So let's increase the length of the zigzag here by going to the adjust density. And remember we said on our e-stitch, the higher the number, the less dense it is. So let's change this to 5 and apply it. And you can see it's much less dense there. So your machine will be able to stitch that much more easily. If we zoom back out, it still looks like it's a straight stitch with just a little tiny bit of a zigzag going back and forth. So we will not see this first line, that's the placement line. We will have a second line that's our tack down line, and then we will have our running stitch around the outside, which actually is a zigzag that is a very uh, loose zigzag. We can increase it even more if we're not happy with that. We can change the density here and make it 10. 10 is the maximum you can go and apply that. And I have to zoom in in order to see that. And there, that's even looser yet. So you may like that when you zoom back out. It looks like a much more smooth zigzag line around the outside edge. Now, for this type of a design, it's truly not an absolute perfect straight edge on the outside. So, in order to enhance this look a little bit, normally we would stitch our placement line, which shows us where to lay our fabric. Then we would stitch our tack down line over the top of our fabric, or uh, yes, over the fabric, and then we would trim down the fabric to that line. To make this design look nicer, I'm not going to trim at this point in time. I'm just going to let the machine go ahead and stitch down this other outside line. Now, instead of trimming it before that line, I'm going to trim after. But I'm going to use pinking shears that have a little bit of a pointy edge that goes around the whole outside edge. This would make it a raw edge applique, and that pinking sheared edge around the outside edge would match this little tiny zigzag line that we have here on our applique. So those are four different ways to create stitches using the auto digitizing function with only two stitches available to us. All we've done is change the properties to create four distinctive different looks. So play with your program, have a little fun with it, see what you can create, get uh, inspirational over this, uh, think of different ideas and ways that you can use the auto digitizing function in the program to create unique designs. Enjoy the program, have fun with it.